Welcome to Susie's Secret Recipes in Little Country Store. And so guys, today my mama and I are going to be showing you how to pickle vegetables and then we're also gonna be fermenting kraut. And so if you wanna learn how to do this, hang with me and we'll get this show on the road. So as you can see, we've been cutting up our um, vegetables um, for pickling. Uh, Mama is actually cutting the stems off of some sweet peppers. And then she's going to put a slit in the bottom of it so that the juices um, can get up inside of the peppers. And then um, we're going to be making um, sauerkraut later. We're going to be fermenting them. So, so this is a great way to go, especially when you are... Um, just wanting to make a few jars and there's no um, canning, no water bath, you know, required to do this. And so a lot of people have asked, you know, what is the difference between pickling and fermenting? So I'm going to read this to you. It says pickling is a method of food preservation that works by immersing foods in an acidic solution like vinegar. And that's what we're going to be doing. And that it also involves the use of heat, which serves to destroy the, the growth of any microorganism microorganisms where fermentation on the other hand doesn't require any added acidic liquid or heat and can be accomplished with as little as a container and salt although more typically goes into it it's one of the oldest and most basic means of preserving food the process typically takes longer than pickling and ultimately alters the food's color flavor and texture and so mama and i use them both methods um i love the taste of that the vinegar gives um the vegetables um you let it set for about two weeks and before you open up your jars and then of course once you open them you need to refrigerate them so you don't want to make up a whole lot of them but a couple of them is good and so we use them both methods uh, mama has already made her the brine and it is actually I think she did 10 cups of it but it's one cup of them um, hot water and to one teaspoon of salt you pour it over your vegetables put your weight on top of your vegetable to hold them down and then screw your lid on and then let it set for two weeks and they look so pretty in the jars and they stay that way so here I am, I just picked my garden and I have tons of zucchini. So I've been making zucchini relish, zucchini pickles, and putting some zucchini up for zucchini bread. And so I've um, been blessed in the zucchini, squash, and cucumber area and peppers. And um, everything is just putting on um, quickly. And so that means I'm busy, busy, busy canning. And so I've made lots of um, dill pickles, bread and butter pickles, spicy bread and butter pickles, and um, sweet garlic dill. Um, there is squash pickles, and it's just, I've been really busy, but that's one of my biggest sellers is um, the pickles and my salsa, um, and so I have to keep keep that in stock. Some blanching there. We picked these this morning, all of these, which is quite a lot, and we've got some more to pick this evening. Um, the big slicers, I like to use them. I make a my own tomato juice and sauce and stuff like that and I like to just can them whole um, and then eat them. They're really really good on a sandwich. We love the slicers. But my favorite ones for my salsa, my rotel and my Italian style tomatoes, anything like that is going to be my organic um, Romas and Amish paste. They get really big and um, they put off a lot of meat. So some of these were picked a little bit early. There's a little orange but they're, um, they'll be turning very quickly. But my aromas are about to cut loose and I will be extremely busy. So I use organic aroma and Amish paste. This is what I use in my um, salsas, my regular salsa that I make and my smoky chipotle salsa. Um, my rotel, my Italian style um, tomatoes, my spaghetti sauce, um, pizza sauce, whatever that requires a lot of like meat, I use this. Um, now a lot of people will use different types of tomatoes. Um, some people use just regular slicers for their salsa, but um, it's a little bit too juicy for me. I'm looking for something that has a lot of meat to it. 
And so um, this is what I use. I'm kind of particular in the tomatoes that I use for certain things. So the little cherry tomatoes I use as well, other than just, you know, eating them. I like them, especially when they're green, I like to use them um, when I'm pickling um, vegetables. And so I use all of my tomatoes for certain things, but I'm always asked, especially I've participated in several um, contests and actually have done very well in them. And one of the questions they ask me is, what tomatoes do you use for your salsa? Um, it's very meaty and very good, and I'm like, organic aroma and Amish paste. And so um, that's what I use other than all the different spices and stuff like that. That has really brought me success. I owe it to the almighty aroma. So this is a jar of peppers that I um, pickled. I love this jar. It's kind of neat. It's a little snap lid. But there's uh, most of the peppers in this is sweet. There's a few jalapenos in here. Um, you can do whatever you want um, and when you're pickling. You can do all hot or whatever. We'll probably do one jar of just solid jalapenos because we love jalapenos. But um, it's been setting for a week, so it's got another week to go before we can open it up and um, try it out. And so I will have to get back with you when we get to that point. Well, today Susie and I are going to make sauerkraut. We both love sauerkraut. I peeled off the outer big leaves. I'm saving the best one and we'll use it to pack in our jar between the weight and the kraut. The first thing we do is cut through the core. We cut the core out. Yeah. I'll go ahead and, and cut up. Susie probably likes her shredded more fine than I do. But I'm, I'm yeah, just, really I'm just going to slice this It'll be okay. fairly thin. We're only going to do one head of cabbage. This is the kind that you don't do a, a water bath. You just simply, um, or don't seal it in any way. What you do is let it ferment for two weeks and then put it in the refrigerator so you don't want to make up very much at a time. We'll put this in a stainless steel bowl and to one head of cabbage you use about a, a tablespoon of salt. If you're putting it in your quart, you're using two teaspoons to a quart. We're gonna salt this and let it set to get its own juices going for the brine. And uh, Mama, tell them about the uh, that if you want to add pepper or oh yeah, a lot of people like to add uh, peppers and garlic to it. Uh, what you would do is just chop your peppers, whether you want hot or sweet, and as you uh, put your cabbage into your bowl, you add your peppers and garlic to it. And it's, uh, if you have the different colored peppers, it makes for a prettier jar of, of uh, sauerkraut. I just like mine plain. I do too, but I may try that. I think Richard would like the uh, 
peppers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In years past, I would make this up several quarts at a time and I would set it out to ferment and it boils over as the gases build up in it and it smelled bad enough that I had to take it to the hay barn and I set it in a feed trough we weren't using and covered it with sacks and nothing bothered it. Even the animals didn't want to go in where it was. <laughs> but it tasted good. And it tasted good once it was finished. Okay. okay, so now on that, we're going to sprinkle um, a tablespoon of salt to start with. And you use either canning, canning salt or uh, kosher salt. Tablespoon, table the biggest. And sprinkle it over it. And then you get in with your hands and mix it. Mix it. Don't do that. Okay, we're gonna let that sit for probably an hour. Squeeze it with your hands to help the liquid start coming out of it. You can see how salty that is. Mm, salty. We don't need any more salt. Okay. We're going to go ahead and pack these with the weights and since the liquid has not came up above the the cabbage we're going to add some water enough to try to get it above the cabbage well i think by the time we get the weight down Okay, we have spring weights. We're gonna use our our big leaf of cabbage to put in here to have between the, the cabbage, the sauerkraut and the weight. Yeah, that liquid is coming up and there'll be more, so that's okay. We hold the weight down and put your fermenting lid on. And just finger tight, not, not real tight. We'll just set these on the counter for two weeks and every day we need to shake it to make sure the the salt is not settling in it. And in two weeks, we will start tasting it. When it's sour enough that, like we want it, then we open it and put it in the refrigerator, take the weights out. Try this. So this jar has been setting for two weeks and now it's gonna go into the refrigerator, but I'm gonna try it. Oh gosh. I could literally eat this whole jar. It is really, really good. I love this kind of stuff. This would go really, really good with um, tacos or um, burritos or a Mexican dish. 
some Mexican restaurants will actually bring you some carrots and um, onions and stuff like that. It's been pickled really, really good. So this is wonderful. Richard's gonna really enjoy the peppers in this. And so guys, if you enjoyed the video, then please give me a thumbs up and put it in the comments. Otherwise, I will see you on Monday for an episode of Monday Motivation at seven o'clock a.m. Central Time. And then next Wednesday for another episode of Susie's Secret Recipes at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time. So may God bless you and happy trails. Yeah.